there you are. All right. Yay. Hello, everyone. So yeah, as Mel said, my name is Chantal. I'm a certified holistic nutrition consultant and currently an Ayurvedic health counselor intern. Um, and today we're going to go through three different recipes on how to quick pickle some veggies. Um, and as Mel mentioned, if you want to take notes, grab a pen and a paper, or if you're in your kitchen and you've got all the veggies in front of you and you're following along, that is excellent. I would love for you to join in and do it with me in the kitchen. Um, so I just want to first off talk about how pickling, canning, and fermenting are all different, but they're all methods of preserving your food. So quick pickling is really nice because you don't really need any special equipment. You don't need too much special equipment for fermenting either, but sometimes a little like lid that helps with the aeration or like um, some of the stones that help weigh your vegetables down are helpful for fermenting. But quick pickling is different um, in that you're using a um, basic brine recipe that has typically equal parts water. Uh, white vinegar is most commonly used because it doesn't have a very strong, um, like doesn't have a bunch of varieties of flavor notes to it. Whereas if you start using champagne vinegar or red wine vinegar, or apple cider vinegar, you start to get these other notes to them. Um, so you'll find that white vinegar and water are pretty much used like one to one and then salt and occasionally you'll find pickling recipes that also include sweeteners. So typically sugar, but you can use maple syrup or honey, which I included in your list. Um, and pickling is just boiling the water, vinegar and salt brine and pouring that over your vegetables. Um, and then you leave them in the jar until they're cool, just on the counter. And then you can put the lid on and you stick it in your fridge. And you usually want to leave it in the fridge for about 24 hours before you start eating it, just so it can like infuse some of that vinegar flavor. Um, and with pickling, your vegetables have like a nice, good crunch to them. But it's not a living food. And so it is different than fermenting because we are not creating um, the like probiotics and the good back, gut bacteria that you get when you're fermenting. Um, because essentially the bacteria in fermented products, they're like breathing and they're living. And when you stick it in the refrigerator, you're just slowing down their breathing. Um, but canned goods um, can be left after they're canned, they can be left on the counter at room temperature. So for quick pickling, you're going to want to put everything in the jar, let it cool down because you're pouring like a boiling brine recipe over it, and then stick it in the fridge. And then you typically want to eat it within a month. Um, and it's really, really easy to do, but it does need to stay in the refrigerator. So don't leave it out on your counter all night uh, after it cools, it needs to go in there and then you can enjoy these tomorrow night with your dinner. Or, you know, if you don't wanna wait a full 24 hours, I'm sure they'd be great for lunch too. Um, and another thing I want you to know is that pickling is not the opportunity to use like your bruised or kind of like sad looking vegetables, like while it is a method of preservation, um, you still want to choose fresh vegetables that are crisp and they're going to have a nice crunch to them when you pour the brine over it. So even though you are kind of lightly cooking it because you're, um, you're pouring a boiling brine over it, um, they're going to stay nice and crisp. So it's really, it's really great to use like fresh is best essentially. Okay. Um, and really almost any vegetable can be pickled. Like you're probably not going to pickle things like potatoes or like any kind of winter squashes and things like that, um, that typically do better cooked. Um, but you know, today we're using pickles, we're doing fennel, we're going to put some cauliflower in there, but you can pickle all sorts of things. Like somebody asked about okra. I'm sure you guys have seen pickled green beans. So 
radishes. There's all kinds of stuff out there that you can pickle. Um, and also in regards to using spices, think of spices that you like already in like your own flavor palette. And if there are things that you like powdered, you can use like ground turmeric instead of fresh or like ground ginger instead of fresh and garlic powder. So it's interchangeable. Um, but obviously the fresh like roots, like the ginger and the turmeric are gonna impart like a stronger, more pungent flavor. Uh, you just want to peel your ginger or turmeric and like thinly slice it, but you can use powdered alternatives if that is what you have. Um, and using whole seeds, like whole coriander rather than uh, powdered coriander is also really nice. Cause again, like when things get ground up into a powder, um, their flavor and their pungency and aroma, you know, there's just so much more surface area to the spice that it like breaks down a little bit faster. So when you have the whole seed, like if something comes in a whole seed, then um, that's gonna impart uh, much more flavor by kind of like using less, you know, you might use like uh, five peppercorns instead of like two teaspoons of like pepper, like ground pepper or something. Um, but yeah, you can use dried herbs, fresh herbs. And in terms of like the shapes and the sizes, like we're gonna be doing carrots and cauliflower today in a turmeric brine. Um, you can cut the carrots into rounds. You can cut them into spears. Like think about what you would wanna have some pickled vegetables with. So if you haven't already thought about what you might wanna eat these things with, you can totally experiment on your own, like with your lunches and dinners and your breakfasts, you know, for the next month to come. But um, things that tend to be pretty salty do nicely with pickles because that tanginess kind of like helps to break down or counteract or counterbalance that really salty note. Um, or maybe something that just like needs a little punchy flavor. So perhaps you're having like a stew or like a grain bowl or maybe even like a chili. Maybe instead of like raw red onions, you do pickled red onions on top. So um, just something to punch up the flavor of your dishes, whether they're, you know, kind of bland-ish or maybe like really hearty and too, too salty, like pickled vegetables going to be really nice. Um, but yeah, okay, so that was just a couple pointers on quick pickling. I think I'm going to get started here in the kitchen. So we're going to work down the list. Um, so we're going to do, we're going to start prepping all of our vegetables. So if you haven't already, um, take a moment to go like wash your veggies. Actually, is anybody, is, can I take a peek at the gallery view? Is anybody, oh, I can't ever, not everybody's face is showing. I was just wondering if anybody's actually like in the kitchen joining along with me, but all right, regardless. Why don't we, why don't we do a, why don't we just ask in the chat box who is actually cooking or creating along today? If you could put in the chat box and let Chantal know who's in the kitchen pickling today. Who's joining with me? So Vivian. Vivian is. Okay. Anyone else? I wish I was, Robin, but she's going to learn. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're going to be well equipped. No worries. Okay. Anybody else? All right. It's me and you, Viv. <laughs> okay. So I got a red onion here. Um, so I'm just going to drop my my camera down so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So for the red onion, um, you just want to thinly slice this. So here's the butt end. Um, and here is, uh, I don't know what you call that end, but here's the other end, the one that it doesn't grow from. So I just go ahead and chop that off. And if you have a mandolin and you want really like thin slices of stuff, a mandolin is really great or if you just have a great knife with a good sharp blade, I just find pleasure in cutting things myself. So I'm just gonna thinly slice by hand. 
And this recipe that I gave you makes two cups worth. So really quickly, like this is a mason jar that is two cups. Okay, this is a wide mouth mason jar. Um, and this also holds two cups, but it's just like the skinnier, right? So you can kind of see, but these both hold two cups worth of um, contents. So either or, and honestly, if you only have smaller jars, um, you can just split this up. And if you want to like give some pickled red onions or any of these pickled veggies away as a gift, I feel like, you know, it's a really nice giveaway because you can really make a lot in one go. So just go ahead and thinly slice, you know, to your liking. So with the with the onions, I like them thinner ish. Obviously, if you have some of these like middle pieces that are kind of fat, then you can just go ahead and like run your knife over them again. And think about like where and when you would be eating pickled red onions, right? Like having a little bit of tang and not like a big piece of onion in your mouth is nicer. Whereas perhaps when we get to the cauliflower and the carrots, having a larger piece of a cauliflower floret or a carrot in like a coin, like a round, um, that might be nice. Like if you think of when you go and have perhaps like Mexican food um, and they have like the pickled carrots and the radishes, those are really great uh, palate cleansers. And those are often in kind of like bigger, bigger pieces and not like super thinly sliced. So. Uh, Chantal, we have a question. Other than a mm -hmm. super sharp knife, how mm -hmm. do you prevent tears from chopping onions? Tears. Mm. I think that an investment in a good knife is a proper kitchen utensil. And if you don't have a sharp knife, I'm kind of at a loss, honestly. Like I like to be able to give a variety of answers and options, but oh, oh, I'm sorry, tears, tears. Oh, tears. Other than a super sharp knife, how do you prevent? Tears, my bad. Oh. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, I've have, a, I have a friend who, um, she has these funny goggles. That's what I was about to say that it's oh, they're, they're the onion goggles. I think that people use those, but I don't obviously. Um, yeah. And then I've also heard the trick of like maybe putting, a like biting on a pencil or like a chopstick. So like, okay, I don't know. I don't do it. I just, I just let the, the onion tears fall. I'll just grab a tissue. You know, I just try to get through as many onion slicing as I can before my vision becomes slightly impaired and it's not safe to hold a knife anymore, which is like right now. <laughs> So let me grab a tissue. Um, I feel like I've read other things like, oh, if you like cut it and then you soak it in water, like that helps. I've never done any of those. Like I just kind of, I just kind of roll with it. Oh, now my nose is running. All right. So I don't have uh, the whole onion cut up. I had a pretty big onion, but you can see like I cut up like three quarters of it, right? Like I have about a quarter of my onion left and I have like a good uh, amount of onion over here. So I'm just gonna set that aside because what I wanna do is just to start um, prepping all of our vegetables and then we will boil our water and our vinegar and put the spices and everything into the jars and then we'll just pour the brine over everything. So I'm gonna grab a bowl to put these onions in. So yeah, we got these onions sliced up nice and thin.
And then we will get to our cauliflower and our carrots next. All right, so I got two medium carrots and a little stub <laughs> just because this was left over from making kitchery last night. And I was like, let's just let's just cut it up. Um, so for these carrots, um, since we're going to be doing cauliflower and they're going to be in like chunks, like the florets are just going to be in, um, you know, just kind of little like bite sized pieces. I like to kind of keep everything that's in the jar like uniform. So I'm going to cut these kind of into bite sized pieces too. Um, I'm going to try my best to show you a trick that um, a chef I used to work with showed me for cutting carrots because you don't always get carrots that are like the same diameter the whole way down. You often have much fatter at the top and then skinnier at the bottom, kind of like this one ish. Um, so I'll cut off the top. I'll just compost those little pieces. And so what he taught me is to cut a, and I think he called it a, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but like, see, I cut on the diagonal here and then I will rotate it about like a third and I will cut it again and then I'll rotate it a third and cut it again. And as you keep working your way up the carrot, and turning it a third, um, you can change the, the angle, right? So like how much you're cutting depends on like how, because if I turn my knife and I like really angle it, um, I'm gonna be cutting like a good length, but if I angle it this way, it becomes like a fatter chunk. So when you do this and you turn it a third and you kind of cut, and I know they're not, they're not like coins, there are not triangles. It is like a weird shape, but they're mostly uniform. So this is really nice for roasting too, when you get those instructions where it says like, make sure all the pieces are the same size, you know, and you have like a weird, a weird oblong shape thing, like a carrot or like a parsnip. Um, you can do this same method um, because you can change the angle to make sure that as you get up to the fatter part, you just change the angle of your knife so that you just end up getting like mostly the same bite size pieces. All right, so that was one carrot. This is my little leftover guy from making kitchery. Kitchery is a Indian stew of basmati rice and mung dal or split yellow peas. All right, so after we get these carrots cut up, we're gonna get into the cauliflower. And this could be a fun one, like if you have kids um, and you wanna get them into the kitchen and you're worried about them using a knife, then you can have kids help by pulling cauliflower florets apart because they don't, you don't need to cut everything. You can help them start. I've already cut like a really big cauliflower head in half. I'm thinking that um, like this recipe for the turmeric carrot cauliflower makes four cups, which is a quart. Um, this is a pretty big head and the recipe says for half of a medium head. So I'm probably only gonna use a quarter of this. So I'm just gonna cut that into a quarter. Set that aside. And if you have any brown spots like this, I just go ahead and cut that, cut that off. I'll just throw that all into the compost. But yeah, so this is the part where you can have kids like help you because like you have these pieces that you can just start pulling apart right you can just start they kind of just easily want to break off into their like little branches um because these don't need to be perfect right again if you're just trying to keep them all kind of like bite size ish um then that'll be like nice when you're grabbing them out of the jar and like putting them with your with your dish 
Yeah, and pickled vegetables are just um, a nice, like if you're doing a charcuterie board, like say, you, you know, you want to do some like barbecuing as the weather gets nice, you're hanging out with friends or family outside and you kind of want to keep it light um, and you're just kind of having like a little snack board, like cheese, olives, pickled veggies, some crackers, some nice bread. Um, yeah, this is a nice little like side dish to break up, you know, fatty meats and cheeses that you might have on the board. Yeah, so just keep breaking that up, breaking it or cutting it, whatever you please. So how many of you guys in here have, um, fermented or canned anything before, but this is your first time pickling. I don't know if we can see in the chat box if this is a first time pickling for most people. Yeah, I have a ton of pickled vegetables and I also like, um, you know, I support the local makers at my farmer's market. So while I, I do the quick pickling, I do like to have the healthy gut stuff. Um, so I'll buy like fermented veggies from, from a vendor at my local market if I'm not feeling like fermenting myself. We have quite um, a few people in here that um, are first time, have never, have never canned, have never fermented, um, have never pickled um and then sandra it's yeah i haven't i grew up canning on the farm but that's been i haven't canned in like 40 40 years showing my age but um i quit pickling i quit pickle stuff for carnitas mm -hmm. and tacos, but it's not i don't use a brine though so i think everybody's okay. kind of in it you got a whole bunch of newbies here cool yeah <laughs> this master we are sensei <laughs> this uh, is okay. I took a fun salad one. class and we sliced cabbage and covered it with plum vinegar. Yum. Oh, mm, cool. okay, vinegar. It was awesome. By the time we finished this. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's another type of quick, really quick pickle too. I've done that. That, that, that sounds divine. Nice. Um, and, and we have, I use leftover pickle juice in jars to pickle cucumbers. Very good. Oh, sweet. Yeah. That's a great, Great extra tip, you know, to like not waste anything. Yes, yeah, so you've got you got a whole bunch of you got a whole bunch of newbies learning from you right now. Cool. <laughs> All right, so we got our carrots and cauliflower chopped up. So the next thing that goes in this recipe is the turmeric. So don't worry if you don't have any fresh turmeric. Um, I have kind of like a little two inch piece here. So it looks really similar to ginger. Um, but I mean, the people in the store probably won't like it if you do this, but if you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I picked up ginger or um, turmeric, if you peel it back with your thumbnail, oops, where's the camera? You can see that that's like a very bright color and ginger is more like, you know, off white. So this is turmeric. Um, so you can, here's a, another great little tip if you've never seen this before, instead of taking a peeler to peel, um, your ginger or your turmeric, and instead of using a knife to cut the skin off, you can use a spoon to just scrape the skin off. So that way you lose a lot less of the, of the meat. So it just comes off pretty easily unless you have like lots of nubs. You can always cut off the nub area, but yeah, if you just scrape down the root. And remember you can use uh, powdered turmeric too. So you don't need, you don't have to worry about having the fresh root. And do be mindful, turmeric will definitely stain. So like, if you're wearing a white top, which I think I saw Vivian, you were, and if you have fresh turmeric, or even if you're handling the powder, just be very mindful that like, <laughs> don't wipe your hands on your shirt, or even if the powder just like happens to get out, 
<laughs> like maybe wear a black shirt or wear an apron when you're in the kitchen because it can definitely stain like my fingers will be stained a pretty bright yellow after this all right so yeah just use a spoon to scrape it off and then i'm just gonna cut this little butt off and then for fresh ginger and turmeric you want to thinly slice it so i'm just gonna slice some and ginger and turmeric are so lovely because they're very pungent and strong but they just have so many benefits to them turmeric is anti-inflammatory antimicrobial like yeah, great for aiding your digestion. So yeah, so we just got these nice thin slices. I'm just gonna stick that in the bowl with the carrots cause it's all gonna go in the same jar. Gonna scoot this stuff off. All right, now if you're following along, we're gonna move on to the fennel. All right, so if you've never had fennel before, maybe you've gotten in a CSA box, maybe you've seen it at the grocery store or the farmer's market, but you're like, what do I do with that thing? Um, this is a fennel bulb. So um, it has these like long fennel, these are called fennel fronds. So you're gonna actually, we're just gonna be pickling the bulb. So I'm gonna have you just cut off the fennel fronds and you can keep some of these and we can put them in the jar, but um, I don't typically use all of this. This is a lot. And sometimes at the farmer's market, you can ask the farmers um, to cut off the fronds um, if you're not gonna use them, or you can just ask them to like cut off, you know, even if they cut it in half for you, like you'll still have some fronds that you're bringing home and then they can, they can compost it for you or discard it for you. Um, but yeah, I mean, like if you have a neighbor who has like a bunny or chickens or something, <laughs> that's also another another good way to, to make sure that the fronds get to use. So yeah, so you just cut off the stems. I'm just throwing that in my compost bin. And then, so a mandolin is really nice again, but if you don't have a mandolin, I'm just gonna thinly slice these. So I would say slices anywhere between like a quarter to an eighth of an inch. I don't know what that is, but just to kind of show you like that's the thickness I got going on right now. And so if you're not familiar with fennel, fennel has um, a flavor that's kind of like anise or licorice. Um, and so it's gonna be like a nice like bright profile when we put it with the with the orange. I'm just gonna cut off the little butt here. Yeah, so go ahead and keep slicing your fennel. So yeah, just note as a rule of thumb, if you want to do thin slices of things like anywhere between an eighth to a quarter of an inch is great for things like fennel or the onions. Um, and then you saw that we have kind of like larger chunks for the cauliflower or the carrots. Green beans, you can keep whole, like you don't need to cut them. You just can leave them whole um if you wanted to cut them into smaller pieces you could like into like thirds or if you wanted to cut them in half to be smaller you could do that um i've never pickled corn i've seen pickled corn those are all like off the cob obviously you're just gonna pickle the the kernels but yeah you know people pickle mushrooms all sorts of stuff so you can really start getting creative when you feel comfortable like getting the recipe of like a, the brine down and like even if you just end up doing only one of these recipes um you know that's great 
All right, so that was only one bowl, but I'm just gonna go ahead and set that aside. And now um, I have a navel orange. Um, so for this fennel orange recipe, we're actually going to use some of the rind, but you really just want the rind part and not the white pithy part. So I'm going to um, cut off this butt. Oh, and another tip. If you like, you can save your like lemon, lime, and orange rinds, and I pack them into a jar and you can pour white vinegar over it and then you can strain it after it sits for like a couple weeks or like a month and then you can use this as part as like a home cleaning like a good uh cleaning spray like disinfectant spray so that's really nice too all right so i'm just going to go ahead and take my knife and just kind of like oops see i got some of the pithy part so you gotta do it really, really, really thin here. <laughs> I'll show you a good and bad example. So see how there's the white part? We're trying to avoid that. Like you want just like that piece of the rind cause that's gonna have a lot of the aromatics and like the good oils in it. But when you get to the pithy part, it starts to get a little bitter. So um, you can just do a couple more shaves. We're just going for like, I think like an, an inch is good. We have, a, we have a lot here, like that's gonna be plenty. So I'll set that aside. All right, so now I'm just going to boil some water. So you can see that most of the recipes like they're slightly different. Some of them are for making two cups and then the cauliflower and um, cauliflower and carrot recipe is for making four cups, but you can totally cut that recipe in half if you want to. But I'm going to boil two and a half cups of water for all of this right now um, and two and a half cups of white vinegar so and um chantal i just let's mm -hmm. i guess let's do a check-in with viv since she's cooking with you oh yeah how are you how are thumbs up thumbs down viv do you need a couple more moments you doing good good okay and then we have could you zest the orange yeah you can yeah you can totally just zest it if you have a little like grater or a microplane and you want to zest it it's just it's like gonna have the same you know, aromatic qualities. Um, it's kind of like the difference between using like a, a whole seed, like a whole coriander seed versus like powder. The essence is still gonna be the same, but I think like the pungency might be a little more punchy if you use like a whole strip. And then we had a good, um, a good conversation going on earlier um, in regards to turmeric and black pepper supporting each other so um i know everybody isn't looking at the chat box but um the comment had come up about alzheimer's and dementia or type 3 diabetes um that turmeric is a great support and um that it is dependent for bioavailability with mm -hmm. black pepper so yeah that was a really good one. Also, um, let's say crazy question. There's no crazy questions. They're just fun. If you grate the rind off of the oranges or zest it, can you and how do you preserve it? Like for later use? Preserve the orange? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, because you're basically taking its jacket off. It's naked. Yeah. Like, if that's the question, then yeah, your orange is just naturally going to start to dry out. So I would say like, if you end up with an orange just like this, because you're just taking the, the outer peel off, and you're not ready to eat the orange yet, I would still put it in the refrigerator. Yeah. Um, but just, yeah, just know like, if you cut the butt off like this, and you've exposed like any of the actual like orange, it's that part's going to dry out. So I wouldn't wait too long to eat it. 
Um, yeah. But yeah. you definitely are going to want to put that in the fridge if you're, you know, peeling away at it. All right, so I'm going to boil two and a half cups of water and I'm going to do two and a half cups of white vinegar. Real quick, it was the zest. The zest. Can I and how do I preserve the zest? Oh, I would say stick it in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And that's like because the refrigerator naturally has a lot of moisture and condensation that happens and things can actually I know it's a method of like preserving our food but the freezer is going to serve you better um, with the zest or you can dehydrate it like if you want to dehydrate peels or zest then you're taking all of the moisture out but you can still add that you know on top of dishes and cook it into stuff for flavor so that's an option too it's just like either freezing it so again, like aiming for no added moisture or like taking out all of the moisture by drying it out in the oven or a dehydrator. I like freezing it. I have little spice size spice jars and yeah. can freeze it. And it's, you know, it's wonderful to throw into your tea, iced teas, hot teas on top yeah. of ice cream. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So so moving on to the water. Four cup, yeah, that was just water. This is a four cup measuring cup. I had already measured out uh, two cups of water. I'm gonna turn that on. And then um, just get these really big jugs of distilled white vinegar. So again, you can use, um, you can use apple cider vinegar as another like common one, an easy one to use, but you just want to avoid using any um, like aged or like malt vinegar. So no balsamic, no malt, um, but like champagne vinegar, apple cider vinegar, white wine vinegar, red wine vinegar, like any of those vinegars can work. And if you're a little bit hesitant about experimenting with different vinegars, you can do like mostly white vinegar and like a little bit of apple cider, like maybe only like a quarter um, so you can, you can kind of start adding different flavors um, a little at a time if you want to start trying that. Um, so I have, I'm doing the one to one, right? I'm a little less. So here I'll do, I'll do just that. I got about two cups of white vinegar and then I'll just add a half a cup of my apple cider vinegar. Right. And then the salt. So I'm going to throw this into the pot. And then for the salt, um, we got three and a half tablespoons. Three and a half. So you can use like fine sea salt or kosher, kosher salt. So I threw that right in. I'm just using like pink Himalayan salt. You guys can kind of see that in my salt box. But yeah, you just basically want the salt to dissolve and not to be using like iodized salt or like if you look at your jar of salt, if there's any other added ingredients, um, like sometimes you'll find salts that have like anti-caking agents in them so that like salt doesn't clump up on the counter because of just like natural moisture in the air. Um, but I would recommend not to use those because you really just want to eat salt and not the other stuff. Um, and there's a couple optional ingredients that we have. So sweeteners are optional. Um, I have organic maple syrup that I just get from Trader Joe's. Um, and then I also have organic um, honey that is from Whole Foods. Um, so those are two sweeteners that I would use. Um, and then I also have some whole peppercorns. 
So black peppercorns. And then I have some whole coriander seeds. So, well, can you guys, yeah, these are whole coriander seeds. Um, yeah, and then we'll also throw in some of the fennel fronds. So to get your jars ready, so I have three different jars for three different recipes. So I'm gonna do the um, fennel in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and like, and I'm not measuring this, I know, you could just throw the whole, like, I don't know, that was just a, a couple. <laughs> however much you want, or you don't even need to put these in. Um, and then I'm just gonna throw in my fennel. Can you pull your jar back a little bit for visual? Or, or here, can, is that better? All right, pull it back. Yeah. There, there. There. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right okay, there. and so what you want to note when you're putting stuff into your jars is to leave about three quarters of an inch between um, the top, you know, when you're filling in your, your veggies, because you want to anticipate like the liquid that you're putting in and you don't want the liquid to go all the way to the brim. Like you want the, the liquid can be like a quarter of an inch under, under the rim. So, you know, start with a, not overpacking it. I'm gonna throw in these little orange rinds. Okay. And then um, I, oh yeah, I have star anise. So I just have some pieces of star anise. Um, I mean, it, it's broken, but that's probably like about one one whole star anise, so I'm just gonna throw the equivalent of one in here. Right, might throw like a couple more pieces of fennel because we're like kind of about an, kind of about an inch there. And I think I do wanna add sweetener to this. So I'm gonna actually add, um, since I'm not making a full, oh wait, this is a two cup jar. Yeah, so uh, this says, um, one tablespoon of sweetener. I'm actually just going to go with one teaspoon. So, you know, this is really like your own preference. If you're not trying to add any sweeteners to things, like don't think that this isn't going to like turn out good. It's going to be still totally delicious. And I don't have any pink peppercorns, but I have some black ones. So that probably about, okay, it calls for two, two teaspoons. So I'm kind of eyeballing that. All right, so you just throw, throw all your stuff in, letting the brine come to a boil and then set that aside. All right, we're gonna move on to the cauliflower and carrots. So the recipe I gave you, remember, is for a quart. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be filling up two cups worth. Okay, I got cauliflower in there. We got turmeric in. Gonna fill the rest up with carrots. Okay, we're kind of about just under, like probably about an inch under the rim. So I think that's a good stopping place. Um, and then I'm going to put some coriander seeds in. So this is, this calls, this recipe calls for a full tablespoon. So I'm going to kind of just do, this is like a half a tablespoon in here. And I use the fresh turmeric, so no turmeric powder for me. Um, oh, and I do have some black mustard seeds. So I'm going to do a little, I'm going to go with a little, quarter teaspoon since I'm doing a half, half recipe. All right, if any of you guys are local to Oakland, there's this guy at the farmer's market. He sells all kinds of amazing seeds and grains and stuff. So that's where I got my black mustard seeds and I like never use these, so I'm kind of excited. Whoops. All right, so then I'm gonna set that aside and then 
Uh, let's do our red onions. So this one's only a one cup. This is my tiny one cup jar. So this one's probably like the most common, right? I think we see pickled red onions on like a lot of different things and in people's fridges, burgers, salads, chilies. So this is a nice easy one to just like always have on hand. All right, so just gonna pack it in there. You can hear my brine getting hot over there. All right, I'm gonna throw some coriander seeds in this guy. That's, well, let's call it like a teaspoon. Um, I'm not gonna add any garlic in here. I don't have any thyme. Um, but I'm gonna do some peppercorns. This recipe calls for five. So maybe I'll just, eh, that might be like six. <laughs> All right. And yeah, and that's it. I'm not gonna add any sweetener to this one. So this one just has the coriander, pepper, and the pickles. All right, so just leave these all here. My brine is starting to bubble. Can you guys see all of those? All right, so I'm gonna go get the brine. Oh yeah, and this is a handy dandy thing. This is a canning funnel. Um, you can buy these individually um, like online or there's a local shop called Preserved in Oakland um, if you're in the East Bay. Um, I got this part of a canning kit, but it's nice because it just like fits into the jar. So that's nice for, you know, funneling and not making a big mess. And in the chat box, <clears throat> I put the link to Preserved Goods in Oakland. Um, okay. It is a wonderful shop. They ship so you can support small business and, you know, Oakland is an amazing, beautiful city and, and all these small businesses could really use support. So the link is in there if you want to do some shopping. Yeah, they're lovely. All right. So just using this, just don't really need the funnel. So see, I'm not, can you, can, I don't know how much you can see if I can kind of show that like, I still probably got like half an inch before I hit the rim. So anywhere between like a quarter to half an inch under the rim is good. Um, but yeah, you just wanna make sure that like you are covering all of your veggies. So yeah, I know we're coming close to the end, but that is, you know, that's basic quick pickling. You just chop up all your veggies, however you wanna slice and chop them. Throw in some salt, vinegar, water, bring that all to a boil. And then if you're gonna be using any of the like, you know, seeds or seasoning, just throw that in with your veggies. And then you can just let this all hang out on your counter until it cools and then throw the lid on and stick it in your fridge and then give it at least 24 hours to marinate and then you can start enjoying these bad boys. But um, yeah, the reason why you don't wanna stick these straight into the fridge is because like if, you're, if you have a bunch of hot stuff and you stick it in the fridge, you end up kind of bringing down the temperature of your fridge and messing with the heating and cooling of everything else that's in there. So, um, and this isn't like, you know, raw meat that you're worried about something 
growing while it's hanging out on the countertop. So this stuff's going to be fine coming to room temperature before you put it in the fridge without any risk of, um, you know, stuff making you sick. But, but yeah, so that was the quick pickle. Well, we did pretty quick. So the same rule applies. The same rules apply for whatever veggie you want to do. So if it's green beans, if it's okra, if it's jalapenos, asparagus, cabbage, yeah, cabbage. Yeah. Just think about the flavor profile that you are aiming for or what you yeah. like, and then you have the base brine, and and you can. It's kind of. Limitless I know it's so point. easy it's so so easy yes and they're really nice gifts to give <laughs> giving preserved foods is a really kind gift to give people and it's good for your gut health yeah um it's pretty mm -hmm. right it's very pretty yeah so oh Vivian did hers raise all hers right up. yeah look at those pickled red onions pickled. very good does anybody have any specific questions No. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's a really is a simple, when you have the basic structure, it's a really simple way to just up your game in the kitchen and, um, super healthy. Like it, if, if we all could have a half a cup of fermented pickled veggies a day, you would see such a, decline in so many conditions um so just try to keep that in your mind like can you get a half a cup of some type of ferment um or pickle in your diet every day when you find something you really like when you find that magic mixture like i love pickled fennel it's really easy to incorporate that so just figure out what sounds good to you and start playing around with it and you now have the tools in the thank you email you will have um chantal's information and you can reach out to her if you have any more specific questions on it i'm going to work on this video um whenever we get off and i will get it up onto the um youtube channel if you need to refer to it again and there will be a list of takeaways as well with the thank you email and uh, Chantal, thank you so much. Yeah. Another another tool in the tool belt for all of us. That's what we're aiming for. Would love to see. I love fermented vegetables too. Yes, yes, yes. I see that. Yeah, I do find when I can see my bones hurt sometimes. Ah, interesting. Okay, that's good that you're listening. That you're that you're listening to your body. Um. So, what would be a good way around? that Chantal I mean if you're having if you're finding if there's anything where you're finding like oh if I eat too much of something and it's creating some sort of imbalance yes good first that you have a a strong sense of awareness and you're listening to your body um from an Ayurvedic perspective you really want to include all tastes but if something is bringing you out of balance then like choose flavors that counteract that so if um, vinegar can be really like heating and acidic and things that are more cooling, um, are going to be the flavors that are, um, bitter, um, and astringent stuff, or also sweet tastes. Um, so yeah, perhaps, you know, not pickled vegetables every day, but, um, fermented because fermented stuff doesn't sit in actual vinegar. The vinegar gets created by like a lactic or acetic acid, um, um, like the, the fermentation process. It's like the sugars are eating um, the bacteria on the vegetables and, and you know, they're creating other, other acids. So it's, it's a little bit different than like having stuff that's straight up vinegar um but yeah you can you can include more flavors that are balancing so things that are bitter or astringent or sweet now they said they tend to use more lemon juice versus vinegar now mm. and actually lime lime juice is going to be more cooling than vinegar or i'm sorry than lemon 
Yep. Between between the two. Yeah. I know. And a lot of people it drives me crazy when people I'm like, do you have a lime? And they'll go, yeah. I'm like, that's not a lime. That's a lemon. That's, it's what not the same. It? Huge <laughs> difference. Totally different. Yeah. Oh my I gosh. Um, and then somebody asked, oh, the famous foot class. Yes. The foot class is on, it's on the YouTube channel. What's that? I have so many questions for Elisa's uh, foot care class. Yes. It is on our YouTube channel, Robin. And then how long does it stay in the fridge? Ruby wants to know. I think you mentioned oh, a month, a month. I'm not going to lie. I have some pickled vegetables that have been in there since October and I just ate them last night. So yeah, uh, but, I'm the same you know, way. I'm like, unless it smells funky, um, then yeah. I'm going to eat it because I don't want to waste. They were pickled cucumbers and they were still crunchy and delicious and I didn't get sick. So there you go. <laughs> bonus. All right, everyone. Have a great rest of your um, night and please be on the lookout. Check out all the upcoming events for March. We've got some really fun stuff coming up and then we hope to see you guys in the classroom again in a very soon time and please take care of yourselves. Thank you again, Chantal. We really appreciate it. Thank you everyone. Bye guys. Have fun eating these. Bye. Bye.